A minute to go in the round. How can you miss a punch over Foster's head? On May 24, 1968, Bob Foster became the first boxing world champion that ever held out of the state of New Mexico when he defeated Dick Tiger at Madison Square Garden with his patent left hook. What is your name? What is my name? Your full name. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby Wayne Foster. Bobby Wayne Foster. Yeah. And where were you born? Well, really, I was born in Lubbock, Texas. But I came here when I was a kid, about five, five, four or five years old. Now, all of the biographies, or most of them, say you were born in Albuquerque. Does that ever bother you? No, nah, no, nah, I don't really don't bother me. It do now, but it, it didn't then. <laughs> <You know? laughs> They're trying to say that, that Johnny Tappy put Albuquerque on the map. Well, I put Albuquerque on the map when Johnny Tappy was about maybe three or four years old, you know. Uh, because when, you know, when I moved back in uh, 1971, 68, 71, yeah, I moved back in 71. Nobody from back east heard of Albuquerque, New Mexico. They thought it was, you needed a... Uh, passport to get here, you know. I said, no, Albuquerque, you don't need a passport. I said, you guys are thinking about Mexico City. <laughs> you know, this is New Mexico. I said, well, you don't need no passport to come here. But everybody really thought that New Mexico, that you need a passport to come here, you know. So I just had to explain it to them that they, <laughs> they didn't need a passport. Yeah. <laughs> but they never heard of Albuquerque. What was it like growing up here? Now, what part of the city did you grow up in? I was, well, I was, I was raised up in the South Valley. And it was nice growing up, you know. It wasn't as much racial stuff as it is now, man. This place is, oh, it's terrible, you know. And we got along really good with uh, the Spanish, well, we call them Spanish, but I guess they prefer to be called Mexicans, you know. But I never did like to use that word Mexican, you know. It's just like to use the word nigga as far as I'm concerned, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I, because I always use Spanish, but we didn't have that, that racial stuff like it is now, man. It's just bad. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have stayed back east now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. As far as when you fought, it was at the, I guess, the height of the civil rights movement. So did that affect you much when you were in D.C. or when you traveled nah, around? No, nah. nah, that didn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have that stuff. You didn't have that stuff back in D.C. then. Mm -hmm. And I see, I was what, 17 years old when I got to D.C. because I joined the military at 17. And you know, like, you know, you walk into a restaurant and sit down and eat. You didn't, they didn't tell you to go around to the back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't no back doors then. But, uh, no, I, I, I really like D.C. How did you first get involved with boxing? Well, we had a guy named, uh, uh, what we we'll call him, Joe Lewis Murphy. He was the leader of our little gang in the South Valley. We had a little gang. And he was a pretty good fighter, amateur fighter. And he used to train all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got involved in boxing. And because of him, you know, he, we all walked from the South Valley to the gym at Fourth and Gold. Because we didn't have no cars or nothing, you know. So we, we'd all walk, you know. We'd, Young kids, we'd either walk or run to the gym. It wouldn't make no difference to us, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I got involved in boxing. And I won the Golden Gloves there and then went to Carlsbad and won the, won the Nationals up there. And I just continued boxing until I joined the military. Mm -hmm. But I extended the year for the Olympics, for the 60 Olympics. 
So I didn't get discharged till 1960. Okay. And in 1960, the light heavyweight representative for the United States in Rome was Muhammad Ali. Yeah. That was something you didn't get. Were you pretty disappointed when you didn't get that nod to represent I, your country? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got upset because the trainer wanted to drop me down the middleweight. I couldn't make no middleweight. I was six foot three and a half. <laughs> At 175 pounds, I was skinny, yeah. you know, so I called my trainer back at bowling, and I told the first that this, these guys didn't want to drop me down to middleweight to fight in the Olympics. He said, you can't make no middleweight. I said, well, that's what I try to tell them. He said, well, forget about it. Come on back to the base, you know. Yeah. So he set a plane for me to pick me up, and I flew back to back to the base. Who's that? Fort Dix, New Jersey training camp, you know. So he made a arrangement for uh, to send a plane to pick me up, take me back to Bowling Air Force Base, and I got discharged then, you know. Yeah. And that's when I turned pro. Throughout his career, Bob Foster would defend the light heavyweight title 14 times. In between those defenses, he would also make the move up to heavyweight to take on future legends such as Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. Arguably, Foster's best year would come in 1972, where he would defeat Vicente Rondon to become the WBC, WBA, and the Ring Magazine light heavyweight champion. Two months later, Foster would take on an undefeated 35-0 Mike Quarry and stop him via knockout in Las Vegas. Three months later, Foster would face Chris Finnegan in Finnegan's hometown of London, England, in a fight that Ring Magazine would call the 1972 fight of the year. Foster would finish his career with a record of 56 wins, 8 losses, and 1 draw, 46 of his victories coming by way of knockout. In 1990, Foster would become one of the first fighters inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. <laughs>